Excellent, excellent. Welcome back, as I said. Uh, a number of things have been happening locally. You were uh, successfully re-elected. Uh, how have you been settling into your second term as leader of the PNCR, People's National Congress? Well, I, I can say I had some rest because I have been at it all the time. So, um, you know, where are we going with this? And these are people who were so-called champions, um, you know, fighting corruption and, and, and made so many promises uh, before they got into office. Well, I think the legacy of this government, Alvin O.F.C., the legacy when it's all over and we have elections and the PVPC wins is that what will be their legacy other than arches and stuff like that that they've left behind will be a legacy of corruption that I think has not been seen in this country ever. And, and certainly even with the Burnham regime and so on where there were a lot of questionable things that happened. And here comes Mr. Mohammed performing miracles for these people, builds home for them, and continues to check on them. Mr. Mohammed has made changes in people's lives, so many people across Guyana. He's built homes for people, he's paid tuitions for people, he has paid to help people to do surgeries, he has helped people to go through college, he has helped people to start businesses. Let's start with these very strong allegations that were brought against a very senior policeman recently, um, um, Mr. Brutus. Uh, they said he was trying to make um, a huge deposit into the police credit union, 15 plus million dollars and the uh, 1.5 million as interest. Um, you're hearing uh, a senior policeman owns multiple buildings, apartment buildings and, and all of that. Um, is this government that's taking corruption seriously? What are your thoughts here? If you go back to the what I was saying from the time I became opposition leader, if you do not have a proper police commissioner who is qualified and can do the work and whose integrity is not in question, then you're we're going to have problems. Sometimes things that corruption is just to do with money. Money. You know, that uh, someone's getting a kickback somewhere and things like that. In fact, corruption has to do with abuse of power and uh, the abuse of power in terms of whether it is giving people um, special benefits, it includes um, executive lawlessness. Is it? And, but imagine ExxonMobil would have been allegedly robbing Guyana tax dollars, 271 million US dollars in taxes. That is back in 2020, 2019. And nothing has been done. They've not been sanctioned. They're right now cases going on, rumors all over the here that Exxon is still defrauding Guyana. Have our country signed to a slave deal, a slave lopsided fiscal deal. Unfortunately for them, low ranks in the Guyana police force, they were putting the information out there, so they became exposed. Now the reality is, this covenant of this country is done in a corrupt way. The allocation of contracts is by in large measure corruption mm -hmm. they you have corrupted the head the body will go the softer areas of nepotism of giving people friends and family and party activists jobs all over the place whether they're they're um whether they are qualified, qualified or not so there's nothing wrong with people getting jobs the issue it is but it must be based on meritocracy and so nepotism, bribery, solicitation, in other words, asking for a bribe. Exxon still has Guyana in the same slave wage, and they've not been sanctioned. The gold corporations that are paying Guyana small, tiny royalties, the Chinese businessmen and the Chinese tycoons that are just allowed to come into this country and set up for minimum duties and minimum taxes, I've heard nothing about sanctions for these people. Welcome back to the flight. Hit that subscription button, buddy, and stay updated with everything that's trending in Guyana and the diaspora. Thanks.